Welcome back. If you've just joined us, it is a Friday Flex edition of The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. And it's time for Off the Press. And Chief Jide Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism, is joining us this morning from Kano State. Hello, Chief Jide Johnson. So glad to have you join us again this Friday. Since um, you have decided to give me this Chief Dancy title, I hope <laughs> I have no choice. Well, good morning and good morning to our viewers all over the world and depending on their time zone, good day to them. It's a hey. pleasure to be with you. Pleasure to have you. So let's go straight to Daily Trust. Now, Daily Trust is leading with supplementary budget. Senators' reps get 70 billion naira to enhance working conditions. And the writers there, it's height of insensitivity, CSOs, Fund is for National Assembly, not us. That's lawmakers explaining there. And then Atiku kicks as Senate approves Tinubu's $800 million loan. Let's start with this very one, Chief Judith Johnson. So senators and, and reps are getting $70 billion naira to enhance working conditions. Now, place this side by side, the 12 thousand naira i mean the eight thousand naira that uh, 12 million nigerians have been announced to to get for six months uh, from uh, the federal government the more thing seems to be changing the model remain the same we are in a vicious cycle if anybody is expecting anything different from what we have experienced in the last 24 years it's just the person is just wasting his time um well, and I don't see the reason why we shouldn't make our financial year to be June 1st to May 30th, in view of the fact that we have transitioned to new administration every May 29th. And from 1999 till date, every president that has been elected has come up with supplementary budget every year, from 1999 to date, every June, May, ending early June, July, you see them coming up with supplementary budget. So I didn't know why we shouldn't change it so that it tallies with a change of government and a change of government will mark the beginning of a new budget recycle. Mm -hmm. That's my thought. But what do I know? These people know better. They've been in government for 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 God knows when, for a quarter of a century. Every one of them, the Senate president has been in government since 1999. The secretary to the federal government has been in government since 1999. So the President himself has been in government and in corridor of government and control of government and in partisan politics since 1999. However, um, you think that at something this 10th assembly will start on a positive note. Well, the, just yesterday they approved the loan. Just yesterday they confirmed the nomination of the service chiefs and then um, they considered the security situation in the country. You thought that, well, those security chiefs will be grilled beyond just coming up here and making speeches and then going and confirming them with just a rubber stamp. I hope these people will not turn to a rubber stamp assembly. And then you ask yourself the question, the president is quick to ask for loan, but he's not quick to put his cabinet in place. Who are those that are going to superintend over the disbursement of this of these funds or this loan that they are going to give? How did they come about the 12 million Nigerians? Who, which, where did, how, did they, how did they come about it? Who, is it through censor or through, through survey? I want to know the means with which they come through it or through observation or, or through statistics from agencies of government. And what's the distribution of these 12, 12 million Nigerians that will benefit from this 8,000? And then you pay them 8,000 in six months. Then what happened after six months to their lives? You see, it, it's the same thing. That's the way Brady paid traders money. And then we said this thing will not work. There's no way you infuse too much money into the economy and then you have few, 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 few activities when it comes to production, either from the industrial point of view or from agricultural production. And then you have too much money pursuing few goods. Then you have hyper inflation. We're already having double digit inflation. I don't know basic economy, microeconomics. I don't know who is teaching these people economics and who is advising them. Besides, the president does not have the full complement of his cabinet. So who are those that are going to superintend over all of this, all of these affairs? And then these people quickly approved it. Don't forget the loan, the crisis that happened with the last loan to Ari God in his in the twilight of his administration, when the rep member were fighting among themselves that there was a particular amount of allegedly that each rep member was entitled to 
uh, $30,000 and then they were paid $13,000. And then if you know how the present chief of staff suspended plenary uh, for, 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 for many, for many, many, many weeks until it was time for their ballot duty. So they are getting 17 billion and they said it's for National Assembly. A ghost living in National Assembly. Are there enough people there? Clearly, the clearly. They, they don't think that we don't have any kind of outer of sense and they just can throw anything at us to enhance working condition of who? When the, when the living condition, that's their own working condition. When the living condition of Nigerians are here, their own living condition is wonderful. Now they are looking at their own working condition. Oh my goodness, these people are insensitive. Well, the, the, that's, that's, the, that's the sentiment that most Nigerians are sharing over this 8,000 naira that will be given to the poor and vulnerable Nigerians. Those questions you've asked. But I understand also that, you know, there was a time when same poor Nigerians were given 5,000 naira uh, from the federal government. I understand it's that same list that is still a you know, in existence, uh, what this administration has done is to add 3,000 naira to it. And if you check critically, you find that most of these very poor people on that list are in the core north, where you find poverty at its peak. Um, I don't know anyone in the south-south that has benefited from that. I don't know if you do know. And then if you look at this 70 billion naira that senators and reps are going to get to enhance their working conditions. I, I heard someone breaking it down and saying it will come down to one member getting 120 million naira. And, um, <laughs> you know, so when you put all of that together and then you ask yourself, who are those that actually need this help the most? Who are those that need this palliative the most? Is it these people who are already rich or those who are poor? And then 12 million out of over 200 million Nigerians. A lot of Nigerians have already been pushed but into the poverty line. Million, if, if, you, if you have 200 million Nigerians, you have more than 70, 70 to 80 percent of Nigerians living under poverty, below poverty line. Then what are those? It's just a sprinkle. It's just a sprinkle. It's just a, a dust of the sand, of, of, of the sand on the seashore. So as far as I'm concerned, did that list, what has happened to that list? Are those on the list that they dead? Some of them are dead. dead. Are there, is there a need for us to inject into that list mm. a new set of people? And then uh, what accounting did we get for the, the, the previous disbursement? Mm -hmm. And then why are they sure that there's only people in the north that are that are living in abject in abject poverty? What happened? It's a nation, it's national money too. So there shouldn't be any form of discrimination. There shouldn't be any form of discrimination. Somebody that is poor in Kano is the same thing as someone that is poor in Because if they, if they want to see, we should throw the lens of the camera and take them through the nooks and cranny of Lagos and see and see and see the poverty in Lagos. You go to Ogun State, you go to Niger, you go to Delta, you go to Cross River, you go to Aquaibon. You see. A lot well, of they said in a bid to ensure line. credibility that digital transfers will be made directly to beneficiaries' account. So that would also make it possible for Nigerians to possibly monitor it this time. And I'm guessing that uh, CSOs uh, like uh, Serap would definitely look into the breakdown of how these monies are spent and those who are going to be receiving these alerts. How, how, how did they come about this policy? And who are those that are going to come up with the policy? What, 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 what brainstorming section did they put into coming up with this policy? Who are those that sat with the president to come up with this policy? By law, the president is meant to have a federal executive council. Someone will say well, 60 days. 60 days is required by the law. Well, he should have waited for 60 days to put his cabinet in the place before he start doing this. Anything he's doing now is just the personalization of what is expected of his federal executive council member to assist him in doing. So as far as I'm concerned, it, it, you, don't, you, have not, you don't have the full complement of the executive, which is an important arm of the government. You have the full complement. The National Assembly was sworn in, they were inaugurated in June, in, in June, June 13 to be precise. And between June 13 and today, which is July, July 14, they've already had their own, their own executive. And they are now having the president that has been inaugurated earlier, that has been elected earlier, not having his cabinet in place. All I'm saying is that it is the same set of civil servants that this that quote unquote. Disrupted the disbursement of the previous one that will be left, 
that you'll be given the responsibility of managing these ones. So the president does not have his own management team. It's like you are producing your program without having the full complement of your production team. You are using an ad hoc approach to do your production. And we keep saying it, and everybody will say, no, give the president time. That's how they say give Buhari time. And after eight years, every one of them is, is, is labeling and calling Buhari whatever name they want to call him. And this is the time we must drum it in. Who are those that are going to assist the president in implementing all of these policies that is being turned out, announced? All of these policies are just mere proclamation. Proclamation by the power conferred on him by the constitution as, as the president. As far as the president is concerned, the president is ruling like an emperor now and not like a president of the federal republic. Because by law, is meant to be assisted in the management of government affairs by the Federal Executive Council. Without that, whatever the president is doing, the president is just still doing by, by, by proclamation, by executive, by executive fiat. And in public governance, we say the executive is trying to be smart. The executive is trying, is being lazy. The executive is circumventing the process. When the executive resort to executive order to do what he should have done through the normal legislative arm of government in running in running in running the government and we keep our we keep our fingers crossed whether we like it or not um two months is almost gone two months is almost gone in the presidency of Bola Tinubu. so by may 29 if the court ruling succeed by may 29 2027 that the first time will come to an end if he's elected he will get the second term and if he's not elected he will go back home but all of these days he has lost in his administration. He cannot recover it. That's the reality. And we keep drumming it. And because that has not been done, you come down to this, particularly to the states controlled by APC in the Southwest, the list of the commissioners are not out. For example, in my state, in Lagos State, the list of the commissioners are not out because they are waiting for signal of what, who and who will be in the cabinet in the national to know those who will come back home in, 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 in the state. And then once you do all of that, you keep you, you don't kickstart governance. You keep government governance at a, at a slow pace. Everything is happening at the place. So we'll be waiting every every now and then to look at the statement that will be issued by the spokesperson to the president or to look at whatever the president will see or news that will come out from Asura through tweets from agencies, from news agencies of government and media organs of the government. So that's not how you run a nation. That's You must run a nation as with a business-like approach. And we keep saying it. Whatever anybody like, let them see. We keep saying what we are saying. This is what we this is what we said when Buhari was in government. And um, it's unfortunate that we were we, we were damn right at the end of the day. But we want the people in power that have been elected to do the right thing. Tick, set that clock. Tick, tick. What you have to do. Too quick. You don't have to wait for anything to get things done. Um, we're thinking that this week, by Friday this week, today is Friday, that would have seen the list, the full list of the ministers uh, that they'll be working with President Tinubu, but it hasn't come out. So we just, as you said, we keep our fingers crossed on that and see uh, when the president, there is a timeline. So I'm sure he would not exceed that. So let's move on. Uh, going down, you have still on the Daily Trust, Tinubu declares state of emergency on food security. Page five is where details of that is found. Yeah, that's a step in the right direction. We just hope that um, uh, it's just not um, um, a, a policy statement that is not backed with policy action. Um, it's a step in the right direction. In mm -hmm. fact, that should have been the first step the president should have taken before the removal of um, petroleum subsidy. That should have been the first step because prior to his inauguration, this, the condition of living and the standard of living of every Nigerian was was not something to write on, was not something to write on about. We had double-digit inflation, and then um, most Nigerians were just living from hands to mouth. And we thought that when the president comes in, he will do something about agriculture. You need food security for you to have national security. So I hope um, they needed, and this will not be politicized. We recall when the president heard that the opening of the National Green Reserve, that grain should be should, should be open and fertilizer should be given to, to people and stuff like that. I think that if you learn a template from when 
for me additional mm -hmm. was um was um the minister of agri the president president of e adb and what and what uh, what sustain what obtains with the agricultural sector during his tenure as a greek as a greek minister i hope that, that this will be done dispassionately a lot of nigerians are 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 are, are, are i don't want to use the another word they are pressured they are they are, they are just they are just they are just they are they are surviving and not really that's, exactly. that's the reality that's, yeah right right on the Right under this headline, you have Kebi government distributes 2.3 billion naira fertilizers to farmers. But then you can't be talking about uh, farming, emergency on food security, uh, without dealing with the insecurity that farmers are going through, especially in Benue State, which is the food basket of the nation. We've seen how that place has been ravaged by all manner of conflicts. They have been killed. They can't go to their farms and whatever. No amount of fertilizers or anything given to these people is going to fix the food insecurity until security is assured for the farmers to be able to go to their farmlands, farm and harvest their produce in peace and in safety. Right. You know, that's why I said that food security is the key to national security. Um, if you are not every nation that has developed uh, an hungry man is an angry man. An hungry man cannot think. He saw so this bat right because he was hungry. So if he saw so so this bat right because he was hungry, you can imagine what happens to an average waterman. So every nation that that has developed has conquered hunger. Food is one of the most cheapest thing that you see in developed economy. So and then but in, when it comes to developing economy, food is one of the uh, is one of the most costliest thing. In fact, in actual sense, we spend. We, we spend the bulk of our of, of, of our income on feeding ourselves, which is the basic basics of all the needs of man, according to Maslow. If you look at Maslow hierarchies of needs, mm -hmm. the base of that need is physiological need. And then when you spend eighty to ninety percent of your of, 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 of your income on on the first on the first two of the, the base of the hierarchy of needs, then your nation is not really ready to to, to develop because you need you need you need your people to save. You need your people to when when there's a saving culture, that's when there is credit for those that want to to get money through the banking system. But we don't have any saving culture. All what you are, all what you earn, you you, you spend on your exactly. How many Nigerians, money. especially the middle and class so and the poor, your, can save these things? Is the first global economic crisis, the first global economic crisis recorded by man mm. in any document happened when Joseph was. Was, was in Egypt, and there were comprehensive ideas that came from that first. Now, they had an, an agrarian, an aggressive agrarian policy mm. that created new cities, silos, and the rest of it. And then the second strategy that came out of that is the saving culture. 20% of what was harvested was saved and preserved. And what was saved for several years was able to prevent not only Egypt, but all other nations from the farming that get. So these are basic, it's very, very clear. This is economics 101. And then you now want got successive government denying the people who are spending the, the loads of money they have, their disposable income on feeding themselves, not having a saving culture, destroying the middle class, and then you want the economy to grow. The economy cannot grow. I hope and I applaud the president for coming um, with with this with this policy i just hope that it's not just rhetoric all of these things are back are back with actions yeah well on top of the masthead there you have plateau crisis tight security as core members arrive new uh, nysc orientation camp and then beside that you have labor party INEC beaker over call for yakubu suspension persecution and then you have ncaa grounds max s b737 planes Probes adulterated fuel. This is not the kind of story we want to be hearing with regards to air flights, right? Um, air travels. Uh, it's, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 yeah, it's, it's, it's um, for, for some of us that I have to use this travel. I was in Cardinal last week. This week I'm in Kano. Next week I'll be in Enugu. Mm -hmm. So, essentially, and then you can't travel through the roads because. Um, 
be because of the fear of the insecurity and giving your family members um, some sort of some sort of sanity when when you are away from home. Exactly. However, traveling through the air now has become has become a major a major a major issue when you have a treated for it. You know, when you have a treated for it, you could park your car on the road. Mm -hmm. But if it if it tends to affect your the aircraft, where are you going to park the car in the air? You park it. Where's the parking station? Where so what you have is the inevitable, and preventing that inevitable is is is. I think uh, I think one, one Nigerian journalist um, based abroad first posted that tweet and it was David David Dundee posted that tweet it was the first person that drew attention of, of Nigerian to this particular issue and it's unfortunate that we have lost the value for attribution in journalism that even the major media organizations that carry the story did not even attribute the source of their story. Well, um, credit must be given. That's that's distinctive journalism credit must be given to whom it is due mm -hmm. was David only that broke the story and we saw the story how water was dripping even the regulatory agency did not do anything until that story got broken mm -hmm. and then the following the the, the the some of my colleagues that were in Kanu together cannot go back to Abuja because of the cancellation because all flights some of them booked through through um through Max Air and Max Air seems to be one of one of them um, the, the very, very few and good airlines that we have in Nigeria. I hope the needful will be done. This matter will be investigated. And whoever was responsible for selling or dispensing this adulterated fuel should be prosecuted beyond naming them, beyond taking actions must be taken. You see, reward must be for good behavior and bad behavior. Mm -hmm. If there are no reward for bad behavior, then definitely you, you will be seeing all of this. Someone is irresponsible. Someone is trying to get economic truth. Someone is playing with the lives of others in order to make Yeah, because if air travel is not safe... Purposes, you want to put the lives of people in danger. And you want to... Yeah, if air travel yeah, is that, not safe, you can't the, travel on the, the road, you can't travel that's by the air, then Nigerians will be grounded for good, which is not um, something we want to... Uh, even begin to contemplate right now. Let's move to the Punch newspaper. But but don't forget, those in government have access to private jet. Oh, definitely they do. <laughs> Let's move to the Punch newspaper. Yeah, I'm with you. Food shortage is the headline here, the major headline here. Food shortage. Tinubu declares state of emergency, plans 500,000 hectares farmland. Uh, they're also leading with that same uh, headline that... Uh, the other newspaper led with, but they're giving more uh, information. He's planning 500,000 hectares of farmland. Uh, the writers there, President orders year-round farming, releases fertilizer, grains to farmers, households, security agents deployed to farms as FG plans transport concessionary loans for farmers. So this has more details. You want to comment on some of the riders there? Security agents have been deployed yeah, to farms to as federal government plans uh, transport. Uh, what, what, what will be deployed. You see, the, the news is, the news, you know, the way we, we write headlines, we write headlines in the present tense, thinking that those actions are, have already happened. Uh, well, these are the intentions of government uh, that we have on this. Um, we don't write headlines of in new past, stories yeah. in future tense. Uh, we just write in the present test thinking that already the action has been taken. What we need, what we need to do is to interrogate to keep this, 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 this newspaper as a receipt. And then in the next one month, in the next two months, we begin to interrogate, we begin to investigate, we begin to track, to track and monitor what government is doing with respect to this policy statement that have been issued. And when the president in his inaugural speech um, during his inauguration said that, okay, for price subsidy has been removed. We saw what happened with what the petroleum stations, what they did immediately, the pump prices jumped up. What he said with the unified foreign exchange, um, we saw how long it took for them to, 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 to implement that policy. So what we do is to, is to look at what they have said, and two weeks, three weeks down the line, four weeks, we begin to interrogate, we begin to ask questions. Beyond saying it, beyond making this policy statement, what are the steps that government has taken? You promised to do this on social day. This is what you have done. So we must monitor the progress and report back to Nigeria what government is doing and what government is not doing. That's okay. our watchdog responsibility. We keep a watch on them and okay. then we bring accountability to what they are doing. You have given us this. 
let's bring the account to the table that's our responsibility okay let's look at the look at the masthead there you have national assembly approves 819 billion naira for subsidy palliative projects you have Dangote cement plants, new plants in Nigeria, Ghana, others. And then you have service chiefs get Senate Nord vow to tackle insecurity. You want to talk about the Ow. service chiefs? Oh, these are the questions you thought that the national. Yeah, these are, you see, you, uh, service chiefs were appointed and the four of them got nomination. Um, on the same day, and we made appearances. How many minutes did they spend with them? What level of interrogation? What type of questioning were they asked? And then what template did they come up with in addressing the, yeah, the security? I think that the confirmation process for us in Nigeria should go through the committee. Let the committee, like, it makes it easier. Let the committee, we see the confirmation process in other, in other climb for, for sensitive, for sensitive position. It's not somebody just coming, taking a bow and going, or somebody, one or two people asking questions. You have formed your committee. The committee, there's a committee on defense. Let the committee on defense, let them sit with the with this with these service chiefs and interrogate them. Probably spend one week with all of them. And then once your nomination is advanced from the committee to the to the floor, it's as good as confirmation. Everybody will vote on it. It's, it's as good as you have 60 to 90 percent of being clear and we should we should revert to that the the, the, the fact, fact that one of the unfortunate experience we have with this democracy is that of the presidency once his nomination was sent because he started with the process of sending is the list of 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 of, of offices and officers that will be confirmed by the the Senate to the Senate, and the all rubber stamp it without going into the normal committee screening and the rest of it before advancing the nomination to the floor. And then we have adopted that to be the norm. That's not the norm. Do okay. the right thing now. You okay, let, let, let's like quickly. To appoint the chief for you. Okay, let's quickly uh, touch on the others you... before we wrap up. So we'll go straight to the Guardian, which reads At least with despite huge revenue, Lagos local councils underperform worsen residents' pains. That's their big story on the Guardian there newspaper. No... And uh, there, details there of that no on page four and five. You can quote me. You can quote me, GD Johnson. Mm. And I'm saying it emphatically. There are no local governments in Lagos State. What you have are extensions of the government, of the offices of the governor, and what you have are the extensions of the political patronage of some political leaders in Lagos. I can give you comprehensive analysis because local government is one of the areas that I'm interested in when it comes to governance. Time will governor, not permit us for that. Yeah, time will not permit us for all if, of that. But looking at the pictures uh, there on the front at, pages. If you look at development, if you look at, if you look at theory of national development, mm. we said there is what is called um, trickle-down theory, that development will trickle down from, from the top. No, no, no. Development comes from the base. Now, when you when the local government has tie full of funds, when the local government are not allowed to pick, to elect their own representative to the point that even a councillor is... Is, 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 is nominated by one leader that might not even be living in local government, this is what you have. All you need to do is to take a trip around and see what the local governments are doing. They are strapped of funds. And then, in, in most cases, some of the people even aspiring who are the local government chairman, quote unquote, elected local government chairman or local government vice chairman or secretary of local government, are not even domiciled, are not even resident of the local government, they are superintending. I, any official of Lagos State government can join me in a debate in any of your program to come for us to come and have a face of concerning this particular 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 matter. So we may have to do that. Funds, yeah, that that's, they, they that's are just existing in name. But, that's something we may have to fix so that we can actually take a look at this issue of local government autonomy or not. Um, <laughs> this chairman and councillors yeah. want to find uh, out just how. Unfortunately, the president. The pre Unfortunately, the president is an advocate, quote unquote, of local government autonomy. Mm -hmm. That he, he took federal government to court when he created the local 
Development Council area. I hope those local government development councils area will be listed. Matter be of listed. fact, even All recently when he met with the governors, he also advocated for cooperation, uh, you know, amongst the governors and the local government councillors. So this is something but that really needs. But when the, when the, well, unfortunately, when the night assembly, when the night assembly made amendments for local government, you know, it failed with just with just two votes. About I think four votes. About 20 states voted for local government autonomy so that the INEC and the rest will get their money directly, not through joint state account. Mm -hmm. You know, some of the states that voted against it, my state, legal state, mm. the neighboring state, Ogun state, to the third state on those states. You, you can never imagine that states from the Southwest that believe in progressive ideology will be the states that were against local government autonomy. Otherwise, as we speak today, the local government administration will have been autonomous of the state government and get their resources directly from the federal government and the elections will be conducted for them by INEC, not CEC, and then you write where yeah, in most states you don't even have the local government administration. It's antithetical to democratic principle and democratic value. And I'm throwing out a challenge. Yes. Any official. We're going to we're going to fix that. that. We're going to fix to that. So we have a very robust we're going to fix that so that we can have a very robust discussion on this uh, as it borders on development because the yeah. local government, you cannot overemphasize the importance of the local governments, uh, the local government areas to development in the country as a whole. Well, thank you so much, Judith Johnson, for your time today, as always, on The Breakfast. It's a pleasure to be with you. Have a wonderful weekend. You too. Do have a great day. Uh, we move on now to our very first hot topic on the breakfast in a moment. Do stay with us.